Hey good folks, welcome to Devs and Dice. My name is Leif and this is Boxes of Shame, where I each week try to paint up a miniature for Dungeons and Dragons. This week's miniature was requested by one of my subscribers, Hostage Grenade. Of course I will paint up some blights. Let's get cracking! A couple of years ago I started getting into D&D. As my passion for D&D grew, so did my collection of minis. And like many others out there, I now have boxes of shame. Legions of unpainted minis. Now this is my underdog story. This is me painting every single one of my miniatures. Alright good people, this is the blinds from WizKids. Now these come in a 3 pack with a needle blight, twig blight and a wine blight. Now all of these were primed with some quite gloppy primer, so I decided to run them in my new sonic cleaner for about 3 to 5 cycles. Three to five cycles and a whole lot of scrubbing later, they were somewhat clean. Time to start basing. I started out with some pine bark and super glued this onto all of the bases. I saw these blights being in a forest region where they would affect the green nature around them. Once all of the pine bark bits were attached, it was time to attach the actual miniature to the base. I used super glue here as well. I even had to use some accelerant for some of those bases to make it bond properly. Eventually all of them got their bases and looked something like this. Now I had to blur out the line between the mini and the bark. My weapon of choice was of course some good old PVA glue, water and some grout mixture. I applied it all over the base and sprinkled on some grout. After this I came back in with some diluted PVA glue to lock everything in place. Once everything dried I primed them in black using Citadel's Chaos Black. The first colors added to the wet palette are Bloodstone from P3 and Rhinox Hide from Citadel. I applied a very diluted Rhinox Hide to the bases. Really what I'm after here is to make the base look much more earthy. I wet blend in some Bloodstone here and there to break up the monotony in color. I essentially did the same thing for all of the bases. And this is what they look like once they dried. I added some Mage Hunter Green from P3 to the wet palette. I diluted it quite a bit and started working on the Wine Blight. Looking at the concept art from the Monster Manual, you can see that the Wine Blight has a green tone, while the Twig and Needle Blight go in the same brown color scale. I added some khaki and earth from Vallejo and apparently some additional Rhinox hide to the wet palette. I started out with laying in some diluted Rhinox hide on the needle blight. Then while the paint was still wet, I blended in some earth onto the face, chest and part of the legs. Moving fast I came in with some khaki on the face and chest parts. For the twig blight I essentially did the same. First in with some rhinoxide, then wet blend in some earth and khaki. And this is what they looked like once the base coat had dried.
Now I wanted to come in with some washes. My choice was Strong Tone from Army Painter. I covered the entire miniatures with this wash. My goal was to bring everything together and to bring out those shadows. Once the wash was dry, I started laying in some highlights on the wine blight using some Mage Hunter Green. I'm really trying to follow the flow of the model and to make those vines pop a bit. I used some khaki to create some variation in the highlights and I try to be quite bold here. And this is what it looks like once it's dry. I added some yellow olive from Vallejo model color. I diluted it quite a bit and I glazed over the vine blight to make everything look more cohesive. And since I had some left, I decided to get some greens on the base itself. Some of the highlights looked a bit pale, so I came back in with some khaki to give it some more color. I added some jackbone from P3 to the palette, which I started glazing in on the needle blight. Specifically on its head, chest, abdomen and, well, the needles. You can see I'm using the same technique I used last week with the needles. Pay attention to where I leave the model, that's where I will deposit the most paint. Once all of that was done, I used some diluted rhinoxide to glaze all over the model. Again, this was to make sure everything looked more like it sort of belonged together. And this is what it looks like. I'm starting to like this result. The twig blight got the same treatment as the needle blight. One additional thing I had to do was to add some black to what I think was the eyes on the twig blight. The details were really minuscule on this model. To make it look slightly different, I glazed in some bloodstone from P3 here and there just to add some variation. Once all coats were dry, I wrapped up the twig blight with some glaze of Rhinox hide. Shifting focus to the bases. As I mentioned, I wanted to tell a story about how these blights destroy the environment around them. I added some super glue and then sprinkled on some crushed coconut fiber to get that forest feel to the base. This is a tip I got from one of Squidmore's videos, by the way. This was my first time using coconut fibers for basing, and I really like the chaotic feel of this. There's small fibers and what looks to be like leaves and stuff. It does actually look like a forest ground. Now in order to show the contrast, I came in with some light green clump foliage from Woodland Scenics. I used super glue to attach these small bits around the base of the blights where they presumably haven't spread the blighty um, blightness yet.
Now to punch that point a bit more, tufts. I went in with some lowland shrubs from Army Painter and some beige wild tufts from Gamer Grass. The idea here of course is to set some dried out grass close to the blights while having some lush green shrubbery. <laughs> I can't really say that word shrubbery without thinking of a knights that say ni. Anyways, yeah, some greenery around to complement the green clump foliage. Alright, with that I think it's time to look at the final result. Alright good people, that's it for this week. I hope you liked the result and the video. If you have any questions, thoughts or comments, please feel free to uh, post them down in the comment section below. I want to thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, then please consider liking, sharing or subscribing to the channel. It really helps the channel out. And one more thing. It's been fairly apparent that the miniature painting videos I post have been very appreciated by you out there. But some of you might think that our RPG actual play videos sort of clutter your feed. Honestly, as a subscriber myself to many large channels out there, I can totally relate. And I can assure you that I am actually looking into it right now. Somehow I will be splitting up these two aspects more and more. The tabletop RPG and the miniature painting. You know what? Do you have any opinion in this case? Please, you know, post a comment down below. Let me know how you feel. Would you like it to be two separate channels? With that, I want to wish you an awesome day. Stay safe out there. Until next time, to Deloo.